Isn't it warm? Isn't it rosy? Side by side. Yeah, that's what I would. That, that's it. That's what they're doing. That's what they remember. Okay. Yeah. What the hell are you doing, Charles? I'm getting ready to go to the Wharton Club. Well, speak to them, you know. It, this is what the class of 75 remembers me as. I, well, that full head of hair? 75? Are we seeing any of those people here? Well, I sure hope so. I hope they come to the talk that we're giving here. Because this is, you know, I was doing all that theater stuff well, back. That's the point. You were doing it back then. People need to find you now in the present. That's what we're talking about. You gotta get found online. Oh, but, but these people are gonna find me. Well, They're yeah, gonna. But they can what? already find your yearbook pictures. All you know, they can see that you maybe once upon a time had hair. I, mean, I did. It, come on, this is look good. Yeah. This is so natural looking. Like, You don't. I don't now. No. Oh, don't so, now. so what are we going to talk to them about? <laughs> Just this. Find you as you are right now online. Get found by your ideal client, patient, customer. All right. Well, that's number one. What's the second thing? Well, the second thing is you got to engage with them. This is very engaging. I'm engaging. But it's not engaging with the real you right now. Oh. I mean, you want present day clients, right? You I, want people I, I do. Work with you in the 70s, right? No, that's right. And is there... So you need to have your presence online, easily get found, engage with them. Engage. Get them to interact with you and then get them into a system that follows up with them in an automated way over time. Build that relationship. Get found, engage, follow up with people. Exactly. And I... In the... Pre you got to get rid of this. I can't look the way I did no. in 75. No, no, no. Let, let's get up to present day here. Come on. Okay. Please join us at the Warden Club. Even if I don't quite look as I did back when I was in Wharton, what are we doing there again? Indeed. And join, join us in New York City where we're going to take you through the four phases that we take our clients through. Assess, define, create, and monitor so that we can get you found online, engage with your ideal audience, and put them into an automated system to follow up and build a profitable relationship. You're sure I can't wear this? No. Okay, click that link. We'll see you in New York, March 22nd. You know what? Main Street is burning. And your customers and clients or patients are looking for you, but they can't find you. Wow, nice upbeat message, Charlie. Yeah, come here, Charles. Uh, what? Uh, are you feeling all right? Yeah. Uh, just say, ah. Uh, uh, as I suspected, you're suffering from an acute inflamed recession. Inflamed recession. OK, well, but here we are in New York City, NYC, the Big Apple, the home of Broadway, the center of all capital for the USA. And, and I guess you came dressed for the part here? Uh... I did come dressed for the part. Let me talk to you a little bit about that. You know, so many of us, when we leave grad school, we put a mantle on ourselves and we say, I'm an MBA, I'm an attorney, I'm an accountant. Why do we do that? Because we have no track record on which to base ourselves and tell people what, who we are. So we put this mantle on and we look like everybody else. You remember graduation? You look down there and everybody is wearing a cap and gown. It's that sea of black. And they're all exactly the same. OK, so the one girl that wrote, thanks, mom, for the money, stands out a little bit. But everybody else looks exactly the same. That's the same as you when you put that mantle on. So you need to stop saying, what you are, and you need to start saying what you do. Take off that mantle. By the time you're a mid-career professional, you don't need that mantle anymore. Start talking about the things that you're doing. Well, so true. I mean, we're in a world now that we know that 97% of people go online to search for a product, a service, uh, anything that they need. 
And we know that 80% of people, once they have identified what it is they actually want, they're going to do a specific Google search on your name before they consider doing business on you. So the question is, do you know what people are saying about you on the web right now? Uh, when it comes to building your online legend, creating your legend now, there are really three overall strategic goals that we're trying to accomplish here. The first thing is that you need to easily get found online. Get found. Secondly, you need to have stuff out there online that is going to be engaging to your audience. So we need to engage right there when we're online. And it has to be engaging to your ideal audience. It can't just be you know, engaging in general. You want to be very, very clear who you're speaking to so that you can gear all of your messages, create that legend specifically for that kind of person. But then, are you really going to rely on memory and good intention to kind of follow up with people? You really need to build automated systems that we have through technology at this point to follow up and follow up and follow up and build that relationship so that it becomes a profitable relationship. So get easily found online, engage with your ideal audience, and then build automated systems that follow up and build a relationship over time. So let's chat how we do this, how we can do this for our clients, how we can do this for everybody in the room right now. How do we go about doing that? You're the doctor. Well, our system is based very similar to what happens when you walk into a doctor's office. It's easy for you to remember it that way. What is it we do? Well, I'm not actually a medical doctor, but I do sometimes play one on the internet. There you go. Uh, and when you go to the doctor's office, uh, they're not just going to start randomly throwing out pills towards you. Uh, hopefully, they're going to take some time to do some tests, take your temperature, take your vitals. So they're going to assess what your current situation is. And that's how we begin when we're working with a client. It's how we recommend you begin when you're trying to build your own presence on the web, is do an assessment of what you look like right now from the point of view of the ideal person that you want to be speaking to in your marketing. So go online, do Google searches, get on all of the other search engines as well, see what people are actually saying about you online. Especially, we work a lot with healthcare professionals. It is amazing. Uh, there are over a hundred websites out there right now that are building profiles of every doctor, uh, of every kind of doctor out there, and encouraging their patients to go on online and post reviews of them, them, the staff, and so forth. So a lot of people are completely ignorant of what's being said about them online, and sometimes it's pretty nasty stuff, actually. So wait a minute. I have a website. I put my message out there on my website. Why do I need anything else? What's the assessment going to tell me? Well, first of all, because the research is showing at this point only 14% of people could care less what we say about ourselves on the web. There are about 78% of people are very highly influenced by what other people are saying about you. So it's about creating content that is sort of tangential. It's not direct, you know, advertising at this point. It's building things on other websites. So yes, your website's important still, but it's where you're going to lead people to afterwards. Remember I said 97% of people go online to find a, a service, but really what they're researching at first is a problem. They're not researching us. 80% of people, after they've identified that someone might be the solution to their problem, are going to Google that person specifically, and that's where you need your website. Wait, 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 wait. I, I'm really confused. You mean everybody that's sitting here right now isn't going to go online and put in I Charlie you, Seymour Jr. You'd and like to find think me? So. No. What are they going to do? They're going to go and if they're looking for marketing, they're going to research online marketing or social media or things like that. They are hopefully going to then, if you've done a good job building your presence online, they're going to discover, oh, Charlie Seymour Jr. is a guy who does video marketing, social media marketing, and then they're going to want to know more about who this guy is and see how crazy he really is. And you know, and, yeah, we hope they don't find that. And then that maybe they'll work with you. Maybe they won't. You know. So if I hear you and understand you correctly, 97% of people are going to go online to search for an answer to their problem. 97%. Think about it yourself. You know, you, you find something's on sale, you want to go online right now and find it, can you find it somewhere cheaper, right? There's a whole list of things that people do when they go online and we provide that list to people at different times, but certainly solving their problem. Then about 80% of them, when they solve the problem and they find somebody online, now they're going to go search on that person, right? Because they want to deal with a human being. And it's interesting because one of the medical areas out near us has 100 cardiologists in this hospital chain. Now tell me, if you're going to go get something done to your heart, are you going to not care who this person is? All of those, you mean to tell me every single one of them is trained exactly the same way? I'm going to love them all. They're going to all go to the valve that I need fixed and do exactly the same thing? No. So I want to relate to somebody who's there. So 
I need to find them online, so I'm going to search for, I have a heart problem, or I have a toothache down here, and I'm going to search for them online and then go find, solve the problem, then go find the people. And all of this in the assessment, in the assess phase, as we would call it, is taking the temperature through lots of different areas, not just your own website, not just Google, but really seeing what's going on. Okay? How many people have, uh, you know what Google Alerts are? Google Alerts, and we're all using them for our own name, for all our clients' names, for all our competitors' names. Okay, we, we need to start doing all that because that's an easy, free way every single day to have an assessment of what's going on there. I do it for my kids, too. My daughter goes and does something real good in, in her school for her students and gets praised and somebody puts a press release out and good old dad doesn't know about it, I want to be able to write her an email. She's too young. I can't write her an email. What do I have to do? I got to text her, don't I? Right? Right. You know. You know how it is. Okay. So assessment, real important. That's number one. What follows assessment? Well, good doctor. You go to your doctor's office, they've run the tests, uh, hopefully they're not going to whip out the scalpel and start cutting you open. I mean, they're going to take that assessment information and come up with a treatment plan and, and map out exactly how you're going to get from point A to point B. So we refer to that as, as the define phase. You're going to define what it is that you want to create and build on the web to represent you, to uh, be your legend, uh, to be the, the marketing message that you're going to you know, go into. But it really begins with figuring out uh, in a very targeted way who you're speaking to. Now you may have multiple types of clients, customers, patients, depending on the profession you're in. So, you know, do I have to limit myself to just one kind of thing? No, but I do have to have a completely different conversation going on for each of those kind of people. And we'll, we'll talk about that some more in, in a bit. So you need to define who is your ideal client. Not just any client, but the ideal one. Uh, we, we'll now spend a lot of time... Let me, let me just interrupt for one second. Do you ever think in your own business, everybody can use what I have? I'm an accountant. I'm an attorney. I'm a candlestick maker. They all can. If, you, if that's your marketing message, you're getting to no one. So we need to break these down, I'm going to do it in just a second as well, into tiny little areas. I like to say that it's an inch wide and 20 miles deep. You can have a lot of them, but you need to talk directly to it. Don't you think that if a marketing message came out and said, hey, 5'8", bald, mustachioed, hazel-eyed guy from outside of Philadelphia. Oh, you're talking to me. Now I'm going to listen. I'm going to give you an example. I go in before a movie, and I'm walking into the local mall, and I'm into the men's clothing area, and over here is a shoe tree. And on top of it, it says Crocs for men. Now, I'm not here to tell you that that is the best title it could have said there. But I'm a man. My mother, who is 89, has a pair of Crocs. My daughters have Crocs. I thought I'd go over and try it on. I'm looking at the bottom of them. If you have any Crocs, and I'm seeing M and W, and I'm thinking it's men wide. I didn't know what that Men and women. I didn't realize that. I didn't know what it was. I own four pair of those right now. I'm leaving to go out through the women's area to go to my movie, and I see a shoe tree that looks exactly the same as the one I just came from. What's it say on top of it? I'm in the women's department now. W. Crocs for <laughs> women now, right? Yeah, Crocs for women. Would I have gone to that one? No. Would I have gone to the one that said just Crocs? No. This is why we must have tightly defined messages in the language that we use in define. Another example is we're working with a dental client up in Toronto right now, and uh, obviously, who is the market for dentists? I mean, anyone with teeth, right? But that's pretty broad. So <laughs> Most of us, right? Except in the back here what, for me. But. What's being built for him at this point are a series of very targeted little demographic groups. So he's got a program for children zero to two. So he's actually got a program for taking care of the dental care of an unborn child. Zero to two, and then partly that's for mom, just so we you know, train right. mom how right. to do things. Did because you know it turns you out there are things. You're supposed to wipe the gums and go in there all the time and do this. I mean, literally. Okay. Well, it turns out if mom takes the wrong medication while she's pregnant, she can actually affect the teeth of her kids and of things course. like that. So, right. but then there's a completely separate marketing program going on on the web for ages four through nine, and then there's another one for nine through thirteen, and so he's covering the span, but. In each of those little targeted groups, he is the dental provider for age zero to, to four, or zero to two at first. And right. so, 
Um, so it's about defining each of those ideal audiences and then figuring out exactly what you want to create that speaks to those people. So that's the first component of define. Then you're trying to define exactly what the message is then. So what is it I'm going to tell to this person? And we like to often look at it in, in a narrative kind of way. I mean, there are certain archetypal stories uh, that really resonate with people. And one is, you know, Joseph Campbell's whole uh, hero's journey. You know, the, and what a lot of people do backwards in their marketing, though, is that they're often wanting to tell their story about their profession or their company or the service that they provide from the point of view of them being the hero of the story. And that doesn't resonate very well with the ideal person that you're targeting. So in that narrative, you know, often the hero has a problem, has to leave the village and go off on a quest through the woods and you know, in that travel encounter somebody who is either the old wise man or the wizard or you know, some super special person with, with special powers. You want to be the that stranger. person. Right, the stranger. Um, because the stranger is bringing in something that doesn't exist in the hero's little village of origin. So something from the outside has to come in to spark innovation and change. You want to be that person in the narrative you're telling. You don't want to be the hero. You want your ideal customer, client, patient to be the hero in the story that you're telling in your legend that you're creating online. But you're the stranger. You're the person who's got the magic special sauce, super duper magic powder that's going to solve all things and, and allow your hero to live happily ever after. So you're defining that ideal character, that hero of your story. You're, you're mapping out the story in terms of what is your special sauce, what is your secret powder that is going to you know, allow this person to go home, the hero, and then you're crafting the message that you're going to tell. Then the third component of the define phase is really mapping out your timeline. How fast are you looking to do this? So we are sometimes working with people who have a problem online that has to get out of there because it's costing them a lot of money because something negative has been posted about them. That person needs to create a lot of stuff to put out on the web yesterday uh, because they're in trouble. Someone else might have a, a 12 to 24 month plan. So knowing what your timeline is is going to have a lot to do with how fast you have to roll up your sleeves and get busy in the next phase, the create phase. Now, we've been talking about a defining your ideal client, customer, patient, crafting the message for each one of them, and then the timeline. Follow me back to this board if you'd be so kind. Some of you are going to have to turn around, at least sideways. I want to show you that we look at most businesses as a round building where inside this building 95% of what we do is exactly the same for all our customers, clients, or patients. So one of the hats that I used to, to wear, we often tease that we're both bald because we switch hats so often, because um, we redefine and our message is different. We have 57 websites at the moment, all targeted to small groups. So I'll tell you one of the ones that I used to have was as a photographer. Now, if I walk up to a bride and I say, I am the best bar mitzvah photographer you've ever seen, and go ask Mrs. Schwartz and Mrs. Berg and Mrs. Stein, they will tell you that, what's the bride going to do? She's going to walk away. She doesn't care about a bar mitzvah photographer. She wants the best wedding photographer. So in this round building, where, and I'm the same photographer, the same eye, the same camera, the same album company, right? But in the vestibule for 5% of what I do, right in here in this doorway, which is the wedding doorway, I must talk her language about wedding. Then I've got my bar mitzvah group right here. Then I have my family portrait group right here. 95% of what I do is exactly the same. Same thing is true in your business. You must talk the language of that person as the person's coming through the door. I had a friend who was in um, software and it was an accounting kind of software. So if you had a big factory filled with equipment, his software would know exactly where each piece was. And he met with the CEO, he met with the marketing director, and he met with the poor guy that had to deal with all this language and making sure that it was happening. I said to him, Joe, you've got three different languages. You're talking Greek, you're talking French, you're talking Spanish to these people. The CEO doesn't care what the code is. The CEO wants to go on vacation, so send him a tube of suntan lotion and let him get the heck out of there. The marketing director wants to make sure we're getting more business in, and that poor guy that's working on the code has to make sure that whatever Joe has written is the right code. Ninety-five percent of what we do is in the, build, in, in the same thing, okay? So if I had three people that we were talking to, I'm going to select these three people. 
and you're a doctor and you're a lawyer and you're an accountant, be easier if I had, I'll skip you, I'm sorry. I already gave you the part, but I'm going to go to a woman as well. Okay, what was your position? Lawyer. lawyer, thank you. So we now have a female <laughs> lawyer here. Can you see that by difference in age, by gender, by um, business practice, my language has to be very different, right? If I have a 24 to 28-year-old woman, I speak very differently from a woman that is like my wife's age who's just become a grandmother. The language is different. But we don't think that way at times. We think of us as the hero of the story, and we just put the word out. And that's not what you need to do to be successful, to have your uh, legend out there online. So think of it as that round building. Think of it as speaking to different people. You can have a lot of them, an inch wide, 20 miles deep, with all those different messages. Okay? So let's face it, we're, we're talking primarily about online marketing here today. Um, I'm just curious, how many of you have a website? Pretty much everybody have a website? Not everybody, but is your website the most important thing that you can be putting out on the web right now? Yes, no, maybe? I mean, you know, is it important for your website to be ranked number one on Google? Most people would say yes, right? In fact, I don't embarrass anybody. The camera's not on anybody except on us. So, in fact, most people are probably spending a fair amount of money to an SEO firm to get all the magic sauce behind the scenes to get their website. But is anyone really searching for your website? If your website, it depends on your website. But primarily, when we look at people's websites, their websites are about them. And again, it goes back to those other statistics that we started with. 97% of people are not looking for you. So it depends whether the language of the website is, is focused on them, on one of those doors. Um, how many people have more than one website? How many really? websites do we have, Charlie? 57. Yeah. The last okay. time we counted, 57. Right. Yeah. Uh, That's right. You just added in a URL. I'm going to have to change my number soon. So. Well, the, the, the site's not up yet. Not up yet. So I can still will say be. 57. It will be. Okay. Um, now, does a site have to be a really complicated thing that you're spending a lot of money on? Not, not in the world that we're talking about. Not in this world here. Your, your website might be, a, a, might be two pages. It might be a landing page, and it might be the page that they can't see yet, that they have to do something to come through. Uh, and and you know, the, those doorways are, are vestibules to come inside. So not only is, is your business inside the round room, but in our model, your main website is also inside that circle. It's not the thing that you're actually trying to get people to come to right away, which is different from what a lot of people are doing. We want people to come to the doorway, because the doorway speaks only to them. Each doorway addresses a single problem. A, a landing page you know, that, that is a, a vestibule like that doesn't even have anything you can click on. There are no, there are no, there's no navigation on it. The only thing the person gets when they arrive there is what they searched for. So, so look at bar mitzvah photography, right. right? So when I have websites on my photography business, which I no longer do, I use photography and video as part of my marketing with us at this point. Yes, I got some nice images of uh, Times Square today to put into what we're creating from today. We had to, I had to have separate websites for each one of those. How much of that website was going to be the same? 95%. How many of the testimonials that are on there saying I'm a great photographer? 95% they're going to be on all of them because if Mrs. Jones or Mrs. Schwartz says I'm a good photographer and you know you made my children look great they don't know if it's a bar mitzvah or a family portrait or a wedding or doesn't matter right it says who you are real important to be able to do that a big distinction that a lot of people just seem to miss that will really be very helpful to you now not all those doorways actually have to be your own websites either they can be other people's websites and we're going to talk a little bit now you know about what we're going to create in this create phase that you know, function as those doorways, but they can be other people's websites that someone else has spent lots of money on SEO for, that has lots of traffic that they've already gotten, because what is it that you can, what's the easiest thing that most people who have a, a high level of expertise can kind of create in 20 seconds with high tech or low tech? I mean, we begin with article marketing for a very simple reason, that most people can sit down and really off the top of your head, you could probably, we could probably give you paper right now and you could probably write two or three articles because article marketing in the world of the web is not writing some kind of great treatise. We're talking somewhere between 250 and 500 words. We're talking two pages. So Solving that problem, whatever they have put in is the problem. So okay. if you think of your ideal customer, client, patient right now and put them at the top of the page, I think it would be hard for me to imagine that you probably everyone in this room, you know, in the next 10 minutes couldn't come up with five topics that they could sit down and write 
500 words about without having to do the slightest bit of research because you already know what you're an expert in. So that's what we're talking about, and that's why we start there. Now, the beautiful thing about writing articles is that there are hundreds, well, I don't know about hundreds at this point, they're consolidating over time. There are a whole bunch of websites out there that want your content. They want, your, they want you to be the guest writer on their blog, or they want to, uh, you, know, to you to start a little uh, account on an ezine.com and be the expert there, because they generate money by getting traffic to come to them. To, you know, people who want to research anything, uh, ask.com you know, needs lots of people to answer lots of questions. They make money off the advertising that's there. But every one of those articles has a link that's going to take people back where you want them to go. So you write a little 500-page article directed right to one of your target people, and it then links them back to where you want them to go and, and drives traffic. And there. we'll syndicate that out so it gets on these various sites you saw. So when Dr. Mark said it doesn't even need to be your website, you're putting it on some other website that is answering their question and then feeding it back to your website. In fact, sometimes if they go to your website first, it's too much information. You're not solving the problem that they're there for. And so they go to the head of your site, having looked for the pain in their jaw, and they're seeing all this stuff of your schedules and all the people that work for it, and they get confused, and then they leave because it doesn't solve the problem. So an inch wide, 20 miles deep, what we're doing. So we're going to speed through some of these nine things that we work yeah, on. Right, sometimes more. you can work on it yourself. Sometimes we work on it and do things for people. So there's, there's a different need and a different amount of time that we spend on things like that. Oh. Let's talk a little bit about the way we do it, because um, you'll notice there's a bunch of cameras around the room. You know, we've strategically positioned them so that you're not on camera, uh, but we're on camera. Why, why are we recording this? Uh, do, do we actually have a purpose for this at this moment? No. Never, never, never get up in front of a room and not record it. At least the audio. At least record the audio. I mean, you know, you've taken the time to get in front of somebody. You've prepared something you're going to speak. Why not capture that? You know, because you can reuse it. From an audio standpoint, I had one of those older iPods pads that had the little circle in it and I had a little thing from Belkin and I plugged that in the bottom and in there was a little hole that I could plug the lav mic. We happen to be wearing wireless ones right now and I would press that button and I would go and I would record anything. So I got five minutes in front of a room and I'm making a little talk or I'm there at my meetup group and I'm getting up and saying a little something. Record it. Throw it away if it's no good. But you can't put it up there online to solve somebody's problem if you haven't recorded it. Right? We can't use a photograph. We can't use a video if we haven't recorded it. Okay? So we've got four cameras recording however long we end up sitting here speaking. You know, there may be 10 minutes out of that that we will end up finding that we absolutely love it because it, we answered a question really well that time, and uh, we're going to use that as a piece of content. So the reason we start with video, though, is that it's the most versatile thing. We want to create tons of content. Uh, rather than trying to spend all this energy to try to get your website to rank, what if you are what needs to rank? What if your business, the problem you solve is what needs to rank, not your website? So by creating lots and lots of content and flooding it on lots and lots of different websites, now when somebody searches for, I need a dentist who specializes in two-year-olds, our client in Toronto is going to show up all over the search results. His website will show up there as well, but we don't actually care whether his website ranks even on page one, because we want him to rank on page one, preferably in video, audio, and print content all over the place, because now someone's going to click on that, hear who he is, get a sense of, of the relationship with this person, and then be led to the website, which then has what hours they are and how to make an appointment. Let's so, assume you, it's all on your website. How many times is Google going to show you on the results page for one problem that somebody types in? I'm going to tell you, if you're lucky, you're going to get there once. But if we have all these little questions and answers that we've put out across the internet and they're on other people's websites that are being fed in here and it's the same keywords, you could, what we call, dominate. And we don't want you to dominate one page. We want you to go three pages or more deep so that when people start going, oh, look at that. Oh, there they are again. I mean, if you looked up right now, Dr. Mark Kosman. Charlie Seymour Jr. or Dr. Mark and Charlie, you will see page after page after page after page about us. And a lot of that will be video. So if you're going to appear here and you're not going to dominate, you at least want the video to be on that page because people are going to go and they're going to play. And they're going to click on that video much quicker than they are of something they're going to read. So they'll skip the first two, three on if your video is right there and you want to see it. So that's why we do a lot of video. Can we then also, going to the next, can we get sound off of this? 
could we put this out just as a sound file? Sure. Right? Right. Perfect. Then what else do we do? We well, can send it to get it transcribed. So now we have text to go along with all of this that we can use. Right? Okay. Our favorite format working with a client is to do our little version of the Oprah show. I mean, so is to do a 20-question interview with somebody. We've now got 20 little video segments that we can syndicate out all over the web. We then take the audio tracks out of those 20 question and answer sessions, and boom, instantly we have 20 episodes of a podcast show on iTunes. Uh, we then take that and get it transcribed, and now we have 20 blog posts that can go on that person's blog or on other people's blogs. We can then ship the transcript over to our, our writer in California, who will simply then do a little bit of research and create those 250 to 500 word articles. Now we've got 20 articles, all out of a single 45 minute interview. interview. So we sat down for 45 minutes. The last time we got sort of ambitious, we chopped it up. We created about 100 different pieces of information that went out onto the web, onto all these different locations, onto 66 different websites out of one interview, all functioning like you know a giant magnifying glass, all pointing, because we all wanted the traffic to go to a single doorway, a single landing page. So suddenly there are 100 pieces of information across 60 odd websites, multiply it out, and that's not even factoring in any kind of social media campaign trying to get people to tweet it and retweet it and share it and put it on Facebook, all driving traffic to a single doorway. So that's what we mean by creating a huge amount of content. That's, that's what we mean by really creating your legend very quickly. So think about it. I mean, you can come up with those questions very easily. You can have someone sit down and interview you and just turn on the camera and create all that content and, and then put it out in all these different forms. It's so. interesting. Um, back in the year 2000, I started a business of still photography and video. And some of the things that I did were at the local high school. I followed a class for an entire year. And so people in my local community said to me, Charlie, you are everywhere. We see your vehicle everywhere. Well, now think of yourself online with all the material we're talking about here, and they go search for all these different things that your business will do and you will do. They will say, oh, my gosh, he really is everywhere. And I wasn't everywhere. I was at all the football games, and I was all the things where a lot of the crowds were. But in this instance, you will be everywhere. So we're getting, that's what we mean when we're talking about creating your legend online. Dominate what's going on on Google. Doesn't matter if your website is number one or if you're there page after page with three, four, five, six, eight different of the results out of the ten, out of the primary ten, forget the ones over here in the paid versions, okay? That's where you're going to dominate, and that's what we want to make sure that, that happens for you. Well, one more point about that. I mean, so one of our dental clients, let's say, uh, you know, does a Google search uh, in their area, Media Pennsylvania Dentist. And there they are. They've, they've done all their great SEO, and they are the number one ranked site that shows up as the result on that page. Happy, right? Well, except that we are, we're spoil sports. We like to rain on people's parades at that point and say, well, actually, but look at the rest of the page, Doc. You're number one. But do you really think that the person who just, just searched Media Pennsylvania Dentist is only going to go to a dentist based on them being number one on Google? I mean, that's the beginning of their search. They're still in comparison, comparison shopping mode. Look at the rest of the page, and you've now got nine more organic dentists all sitting there and a bunch of paid people who have got the top of the page and the right-hand column. So what you've just done is position yourself number one on a page directly head-to-head -head with your competition. Our different way of doing that is to say, well, we'd like one dentist in that one location to be the absolute dominant presence so that when somebody is searching for dentist in Media Pennsylvania, that one dentist owns all 10 organic slots on page one. All 10 of them. All of them. All 10 on page two. All 10 on page three. Does that sound insanely impossible? It's actually easier than all the work that's going into getting your website ranked on there. Why? Because you don't have to get the website. It's the website, it, it, by creating all this content, by putting video out on YouTube and on Viddler and on all these other sites that are very, very active, they're doing all the SEO work for you. You're just tagging your content to the keywords that you want to dominate. In this case, Media Pennsylvania Dentist. I can own that in less than 87 days if I want to. I mean, you, because no one else is doing it in that market. They're all focusing on their one website. They're putting all their eggs in one basket. We're taking advantage of everyone else's basket and getting you to completely dominate that page. What it's do you think pretty is powerful. the number one Wharton Club of New York video on YouTube? Yeah, you're looking at us. 
you saw it earlier. Why? Because there weren't a lot of videos. It took all of a week to be number one. Right? Same thing on Google. If you search there, we're a little further down because there are a number of things. But with Wharton Club of New York, right in the, and you use that as your keyword, you're going to be there. So the same thing is true for your business. And if video is not being used by a lot of your competitors, and unfortunately that's a big mistake that a lot of people go into, they look left, they look right. I did do that left and right, yes? Okay, <laughs> backwards to the camera. But, and then they copy what everybody else in their sphere, in their tight business, does. Okay? And if you're looking for normal results, normal, norm, in the middle, then continue doing it. One of the examples I love to use is the Sunday newspaper in the real estate section. And you hold that out there and you squint a little bit and you say, okay, which one of these is going to jump out at me and make me come and buy that property? And they all look exactly the same. It's the mantle on again. It's the black robe and everybody looking the same. It does you no good. You need to get, we say, get out of the crowd. We don't want you to stand out in the crowd. We want you to get out of the crowd. Go start your own crowd. So you've got to do it in a different way. Video is one way because a lot of people still aren't doing it. And you don't need four cameras. You don't need someone as effective and creative as Chris is to run your... You can have one camera and start working on some things. You can certainly do some audio right away. Everybody in this room can do audio tomorrow. It's not difficult to do. Well, we focus on video, too, because Google will help you cheat. Because, yes. you know, Google bought YouTube. They own it. Uh, you know, they, 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 they will artificially move video onto page one, even though it doesn't necessarily deserve it based on, on the SEO work that went into it, simply because they know that video is, is we're a media-rich culture. People are raised watching television. They know for a fact that you're going to click that video more with a higher probability than reading the other people's websites. So what are you'll appear there. Nine steps and create some of those. All right, so you're going to put articles out. out there. You're going to have your website, which is where you're trying to drive traffic to that location. You're going to create that audio podcast show by just taking the audio right out of there. So you, you can create audio uh, on iTunes. These and beautiful thing is 99% of what we're describing here is free, actually, because they want your content on there. So article sites, your own website that you probably already have is the destination. Uh, ideally, you want to have a blog on that website because, again, if you create a static website, it doesn't get re-indexed by, uh, you know, the, the, the joke about the web right now is that it's a little bit like your, your produce shelf in the grocery store. Everything has an expiration date and it's today. So if you don't put something new out tomorrow on your website, the search engines no longer feel that you're, you're an active site and somebody else who's putting something out new is going to win. So that's why blogs are so critical. So if you don't have one on your website, attach one to it. Or, or you, even if you use the free kind of platforms like Blogger or, or WordPress and, and build it there. But put fresh content out on the words and the terms that you need to own that are r related to your ideal client. So your website, audio going out onto, uh, onto the podcast site. Social media, of course, is something you've probably heard something about. You may have heard that referred um, to once or twice. And really, that's a great way just to kind of get some buzz going, get the word out there that, hey, my latest video has just been published about such and such. So make sure you're tweeting it out there, you're putting it out on Facebook, you're putting it out on LinkedIn uh, if it's relevant to your audience. Webinars are another great thing to do. We, you know, we talk about the 20-question the kind of format that we'll, we'll do with a client, but you can take all 20 questions and, and put that out there as a webinar and invite people to it. Who's your favorite guy that you always like to yeah, quote? Yeah, I, I love the expression, <laughs> always have some place to invite people to. So you, you want to be able to have them come to your website. You want to say, well, if you go there, I have a webinar coming up. Now, do you need to be at that webinar every time? I'm, telling, I'm standing here telling you no. You go to our websites right now, I don't know how we're doing two or three webinars at the exact same time because they're pre-recorded. But they get to see us. We answer questions. We've gotten questions in from other clients in the past. We use that information. And it is a question and answer style as if they are live. Sometimes we're reading questions that Mrs. Jones, Mr. Smith have just sent in to us. And we're making them feel like it's a part of it. But it's always up there. So next Tuesday, come to our site at 1 o'clock and we have this webinar. That's one way to do that. Webinars are just an easy thing for people to, to see. And they can stay there right. if you create the evergreen. They don't have to be live. You right. can actually, just like your favorite TV show can be in reruns, your webinars can be in reruns. There's great technology now that allows you to record a webinar once and then put it there so that anyone who clicks on it is going to have a semi-live experience, but it is pre-recorded. 
Now, all of that so far is really just marketing your current business, but the next step above that, our, our sort of platinum level that we talk about, is you know, three additional layers, which is if you're going to create all this great content to market with, because that's really what we're talking about is content marketing. Create great stuff that your ideal client wants to digest, and it positions you as the expert that's delivering that. But why not actually sell the content itself as a, either in addition to your business or you know, it can actually become bigger than your business. So one thing to always consider if you have a high level of expertise is creating an information product. Now what's an information product? Well, it's a book, is, it, is an old fashioned information product, it's information that you're selling. But it can be the webinar itself. The webinar might be a free marketing tool that you're using to bring people to show your expertise, but that also might lead to the next webinar that you charge admission for. So, you, you know, the beautiful thing about info products is that now you have your expertise working 24-7 while you're off in Bermuda, you know, and you're still getting paid for your expertise because that's there 24-7. Somebody clicks the PayPal button and uh, either downloads it or experiences it. So it can be audio. It can be, it's all the other things we just talked about. It can be audio. It can be print. It can be articles. It can be video. All of that content can become an info product itself. One of the things when we work with mid-career professionals, we also work with what we'll call small business, under $37 million in sales in a year, um, is that so many of the professionals are trading one hour of time for one hourly fee. Doctors, lawyers, dentists are trading. Now, there are only so many hours in the day. You're only going to get so much for your time. Even if you're getting $1,000 a minute, there's probably still a glass ceiling where you're not going to be able to go above that in what you're able to charge. Because at some point, no matter how good looking you are, how talented you are, somebody down the street may have something that's not quite as expensive as what you've got and they may decide they want to go somewhere else. Right. There's a price point at which good enough is good enough. Yeah, good enough is good enough. So <laughs> the best is not necessary. How are you going to earn more money? You've got kids ready to go to college. You've got a daughter that's about to have a wedding. You want to contribute to so one of the things to do is not trade your time for money, but to trade your information for money. It's your knowledge they want anyway. Yes, as a dentist, as a doctor that's going to be a surgeon, we want to make sure those hands are really skilled and they go in there and they craft whatever they're working on. But for many of us, the knowledge that you have, that you have, that you have, over the years, you can sell that knowledge. Some of the knowledge that we sell, and other people do too, let's say you're an attorney. How to market as an attorney how to sell your service. Now you're teaching other people to do the sort of thing that you do. That's also another way to do that. So think of it yourself. Am I boxing myself in and limiting myself because I'm trading an hour of my time for an hourly fee versus selling information? And once you have that information, we, we build what are called evergreen sales funnels. I mean, the beautiful thing about the web is that you don't have to be selling your information. You, you, by building these websites, by generating that traffic, by being the person who has the solution, that's just a button that's there 24-7. Somebody clicks it, and it goes into a shopping cart, and that is happening completely in an automated way. There's no human interaction there at that point. It's there forever. You know, uh, the, the next step that's above... Right. If you go to our website right now, you're going to find... I mean createyourownlegendnow.com. Okay, Which one? We have 57. <laughs> right? One of the 57. You're going to find a webinar there. You're going to find some products there that you can go, very nice of you to do it, go there right this minute and put your credit card in and purchase some of our products. It's right there for you. Please don't delay. Take your phones out. No, I'm kidding. But it's there for you. We don't have to be there. We don't have to swipe your card. I do have a little cute little thing that I've got with me now for my cell phone that I can swipe a card right here tonight if I wanted to, to put it right in, and it's Square. I don't know if you've heard of Square. But you don't need to do that when you're online. It'll do all that for you. So It's, it's evergreen. It's it your is. sales team working yeah, for it. Going. And then the, the ninth step in our nine-step kind of thing is, you know, why not take that content and do it in a very planful way, you know, start from the very beginning with a, an outline in mind, and why not, if you have any kind of high level of expertise, position yourself to be a best-selling author? Um, you know, it is easier than it has ever been at any point in history to become a best-selling author right now. The technology is amazing. You can work with a publisher. You can not work with a publisher. You can go straight to Kindle. You can go straight to iBook. Uh, you can write a blog for an entire year, you know, having mapped it out already. And at the end of 52 weeks, if you've done 52 blogs and you've done them in 12 components of information, you just wrote 12 chapters of a book. And uh, you get an editor and put it together for you. you. You know yourself when there's a presentation and they announce that so-and-so is a best-selling author. You think a little more highly of that person right then. 
Okay? Now, I didn't know any better. Dr. Markey is married to a psychologist, so we have two psychologists in the house. I don't know what the hell they talk about me when they go home, and he's you know, upset at me, and the two of them are deciding who I am and what I'm doing. But in any case, we decided oh, we were going to write a book. We've been together since the beginning of 2010. And I said, okay, we're going to write a book. We're going to start off, by the way. We're not going to wait till the ninth place. We're going to start off and write a book. See, and in my world, you know, it takes at least a year, maybe two, maybe five Certainly for to write wife. your book. She goes so I'm like, what are you talking about? We're, we're going to build a business. You're going to write a book? You know, we're going to stop everything and just write a book? She's going to another one. I just saw that on Facebook. Yes, yeah, she's, she's going for going. three weeks to Virginia something or other. And yeah. she gets into it, and they talk about how to do this, and they're writing, and she goes year after year after year, and who has the best-selling book, and who does not? Okay, so we'd be happy to talk to you when we get to some question and answer time about our number one best-selling book on Amazon.com. Be happy to tell you how we did it. Be happy to tell you about the five marketing campaigns that we went through to get this book to be a best-selling uh, book on Amazon.com. And I will tell you that we wrote the book. We published the book. We took it to number one on Amazon.com in under 91 days. I didn't think it was possible. <laughs> now, He's a real taskmaster. He cracks the whip. Book. <laughs> Am I going to put that up against some of the great books in history? Eh, there may be parts of it. That, okay, but it's a best-selling book, and it did for us what we wanted it to. It is a calling card. So when we walk into people and we say, um, we'd just like you to have a copy, and we've both signed the book already, and there's now, not the ones that we happen to bring today, gee, you know, I just wanted to make sure I gave you the opportunity for the book, but we have added this number one best-selling emblem to the front of that and republished the book. It's very simple to do that these days, and we'll talk further about how we do that. Okay? When you've got some questions about that, if that's something that you want to do, because you're in the driver's seat when we finally get there. You're our ideal client. You tell us what you want to talk about, right? It's the same kind of thing there. So we'll tell you about how we did that. Um, we also, you know, wouldn't it be nice if we could all go to the gym <laughs> and we could lift the heavy weights one time and get really, really buff and then never do it again? <sighs> I'm still looking for that pill. Unfortunately, it's not possible, right? So we've already talked about assess, we've talked about define, we've talked about the nine steps in create. Now we've got one more phase that we always go through, and that is monitor. We need to monitor. The doctor monitors. Believe me, my mother, who is diabetic, monitors her blood sugar four times a day. You need to do that for your legend online all the time, too. We already mentioned Google Alerts. Right, Google yeah. Alerts is, is a great way to do that. Yeah. Okay. So. Where have we been and what have we covered so far? So that we are coming to the end of what's going on here. So we want you to get found. We want you to engage. We want you to follow up and build systems prof and build profitable relationships with automated systems. That's what's really important what we're doing here. So, And when we work with clients, we go through what doctors often go through in the assess define, create, and monitor. And that's it. That's the create your own legend whoa, whoa, whoa. system. Wait, wait, Charles, it's Charles, 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 what, what are you doing? What are you doing? We're not, we're not done. No, we're, where are you going? Are you going out to the do we, do we need, information? We need protection. Oh my God, really? No, 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 not that kind of protection. Oh, not that kind of, uh, oh, because we're going out into the online the jungle. The online I jungle, forgot. Okay. yes. Right, the online jungle. Tell them about the online jungle. Well, okay. Why do we have to be careful out there? Because we don't, another website, Create Your Own Legend Now is the one. We also have Repair Your Own Legend Now. We're going to be going out next week, actually, to Minneapolis to work with a, uh, another client uh, who's gotten himself into a wee little bit of trouble. Is this as ridiculous looking as I think it is? <laughs> no, it's okay? All right, go ahead. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hey, we're going into the jungle. That's okay. We're going on go. safari We need here. protection. Why do you need protection on the web? Well, we mentioned in the healthcare world, uh, you know, we spent a lot of time there. There are over 100 websites out there soliciting ratings, reviews of people in healthcare. It's true of a lot of businesses. You know, if you have products, there are product review sites. If you write a book and put it on Amazon, there's people putting, posting reviews about your book online. If you anger someone, if you have an employee who you have fired, uh, if you have a spouse who, you know, you have had a divorce uh, going through, the problem with the web 
is that there's very little policing on these websites. Anyone can pretend to be anyone online and post pretty much whatever the heck they want on a blog, on a review site, uh, on anything. And so you can really very quickly get your reputation trashed. We worked with one dentist uh, who, unfortunately, it was only one person. It was one single really pissed off person who had posted over 10 different reviews on 10 different websites, really tearing this guy apart uh, with false things. But there's not a lot you can do to get rid of that stuff once it's there. Uh, the, the but he didn't even know it until the patients started dropping That's why off. you want those Google alerts. Right, Dr. Right? Samuels. Dr. Samuels, he didn't know what was going on until things started slowing down and he looked a little further and his buddy said, what do you mean, you don't have Google well, alerts? Well, so, someone else this? told him. What's Somebody said, you, you know what they're saying about you online right now, right? Yeah. He's like, no, and he goes and Googles and turns a little bit pale and realizes he's, he's in deep doo-doo at this point because you know there are things being posted that are gonna drive any future patients away. That can happen to any business. So, I mean, if you're not monitoring on a regular basis, then you don't know what the bloggers are saying about, what do you call them usually? The, the blogger with a, with a what? Burr up his with butt. With a burr up his butt. Anybody <laughs> can come after you for whatever reason. You know, you cut them off in traffic, he knows who you are, and all of a sudden you start seeing these things. So we do need to be careful, and we do need to monitor, and we do need to stay after it. And sometimes we gotta go with a quick repair, get things out of the way. It's never coming out of Google. It's always going to be online. People can find it if they want to. But we can push it out of view wow. enough. Right. That That's really why it's so important to, to understand you. this concept of not just wanting your, your website number one on Google because that's great, but now someone has trashed you on their blog and their blog happens to be a much more active site than your site is, and guess what? They're getting ranked higher than you are. Uh, dare, dare I raise a, an interesting political uh, example right now? Uh, Rick Santorum pissed somebody off. Uh, several years ago. Uh, do, do you know what comes up pretty much number one if you Google Rick Santorum's name? I, I won't go into graphic detail, but if you want to entertain yourself later, uh, just Google Santorum and uh, you'll, you'll see that Dan Savage, uh, you know, columnist, uh, uh, has created a definition of what Santorum means, and Santorum cannot get rid of this. It, it, just because there's an active uh, political campaign going right now, there happens to be one site ranked higher than Dan Savage's rather painful definition of what a Santorum is. Uh, but he has tried to get Google to remove this. He has tried to complain. He's tried to sue. But there's nothing illegal about what's going on. I mean, and, you and know, we're going up to Minneapolis all next week, and we're working on a repair to start off. But one of the things that we do differently from a lot of other people in a repair your legend, repair your own legend now, another site. Create your own legend now, repair your own legend now. One of the things that we do is we want to jump into create your own legend now as fast as we can. Let's get rid of the bad as best we can, but don't just fill it with crap. Fill it with things of the business and the, the image that you want to have moving forward from that space not just your name out there in a lot of articles that don't mean anything. Oh, you have a cocker spaniel. Oh, your daughter sang and the such and such. Take nothing away from your daughter. But, you know, we really need to put some good, meaty material. So that's what we're doing for a week as we go out there. Had a conversation with a fellow down in, right, in, in Dallas. Same problem. He had one little problem. It happened to be in 2009 for a DUI. He was pulled over. Um, the marijuana in the center case was not his. So his wife said, and then she took the fifth when was asked whose who's it was. was it? So I don't know whose it was either. But now he's in appeal, and all the material from the appellate court is making it into Google. So something he thought he was passed two years ago, three years ago, now it's coming back again. Well, Charlie, what do I do? Dr. Mark, what do I do? And it was interesting because this guy actually is an internet marketing guy, and uh, he had started to do some repair, but um, unlike what we're talking about here, he was doing kind of random bits of information, and sure enough, he was starting to succeed in pushing stuff down. But why bother doing that? I mean, there are services you can definitely pay money for that will create three or four different blog sites, and they'll you know, pump your name out there in, in different contexts to try to move stuff down. But why not actually take the opportunity to do what you should be doing in the first place, which is creating your legend in the first place? We do the exact same work, really, for a repair situation that we do for a positive marketing campaign. We, we just do the positive marketing campaign. The building, it's the same 
for yep. You know, because he came he, through a different vestibule coming into us, different doorway. Is really I mean, what it was. The easiest thing to dominate are, are things that are not, you know, th very competitive. And unless your name is John Smith, unfortunately, then you've got a little bit of a, a challenge. But actually, not in the repair sense, because there's so many other people helping you crowd things out. But if you have a unique name, that's the easiest thing to dominate 10 pages deep on Google. Uh, you know, it doesn't take a ton of work for you to have no space for anyone to be posting anything about your, your good name. It's a lot more challenging if you're trying to own soap, you know. Uh, but you know, you, you can, but it would take a lot more content to do that. But you want to, you know, protect yourself by building the buffer in the first place, and you might as well build the buffer with what you want people to know about you. Uh, Let you me know, give do you your a, marketing a ahead quick time. overview of what we would call our 87-day launch, which is what we're going out to Minneapolis to do. No surprise to you, we're going to do an assessment first. We're going to define exactly who his target audience is. We've already submitted some questionnaires to this fellow. I think he was overwhelmed when he saw the extent that we were asking him to fill out. But now he's defined who those people are, his ideal clients. He happens to be a speaker. So are his ideal clients the people who put their butts in the seats or the person who hires him to put the people into those seats? So you've got to look at it two different ways that way, first of all, right. and decide all the different campaigns that he has. Okay? So then what we're going to do is, after we've defined all that and the language and the timetable, we're going to sit him down and we're going to have uh, an interview with him about an hour, and we're going to cut up all these little bits of keyword-rich uh, questions and answers. And we're then going to syndicate that out onto the Internet into all those other little sites using video, audio, text, as we're going to put it out there. And by the time we finish with this guy, the problem that he had before will be pushed down so far, and the business that he really wants, he's a good guy. He's a really good guy. We don't want to work. He just had a very stupid with day. With scumbags. That cost him pretty badly. One, one of the things that you need to realize in your business as well is that 30% of people are toward people, 30%, and 70% of people are away from people. I have a car, the tires are bald, the air conditioning doesn't work, the transmission's ready to fall out of it. I want to get away from that and go over there to that one. As opposed to the 30% that say, Dr. Mark might do this a little bit, so don't, don't look at him right now. Woo, look at that one. That's a cute one. I want that one. It's the shiny object syndrome. People also pay attention more quickly if they're away from people. They will pay more. If they're away from people, does that guy need to get away from He lost one contract that he had for eight years over and over and over again. It was worth $200,000 to him. You think he's got a pain, what we would call an ache point, that he wants to get away from? So we're going out there to help him get away from this problem. So even if a lot of your customers, for instance, the cruise lines, if the cruise lines understood this, they would stop saying all the time, Come down to the islands, man, and enjoy yourself. Now they say, you're tired of all that rush hour traffic? You want to get away from the snow? Come down and enjoy yourself. So it gets into that language. So even if a lot of the people that you deal with are toward people, and that's what you think they're really, you've got to figure out which of those people are also away from. What do they want to get away from? You're selling luxury um, apartments in downtown Manhattan, and you've got to... Yeah, but there must be something they want to get away from. Why are they just looking at So think of what some of that language is and help them with that language as well. Yeah. Okay. Pain's a better motivator than pleasure, unfortunately. Always has. <laughs> we paying more to the cardiologist to take care of the heart that for 40 years we've been stuffing ourselves with food and not taking yeah. care of ourselves? It's yeah. easier to lose weight when somebody tells you you're going to die than when you're just trying to lose weight to look good. So <laughs> that's a quick overview of what that 87 day is that we're doing. So again, as I started to do before I had to get protection out there in the jungle, <laughs> we've talked about get found, engage, follow up, and build relationships with people, right, for profitable relationships in an automated way. And we've talked about the four phases that we take people through. The assess phase, kind of like the doctor doing the diagnostic workup. The define phase, kind of like the doctor coming up with the treatment plan. The create phase is the surgical procedure in the first place. And then the follow-up care is the monitor phase where you're putting things in place that you're going to keep tabs on what is being said about you online and whether your, your, your message is actually getting out there effectively. Okay, and so when we've done this, as we say, we do need 
protection when we're out there in the online jungle. So you want to make sure you're monitoring and figuring out. This is hot. See, I'm working hard up here. <laughs> this is hotter than it really needs to be with this on. So the jungle is hot. Yes. Yeah, the jungle is very, very hot. So, yeah. and then after we go there, we've got the repair, which we've been talking about, right? Yep. Okay. So that. there you have it. That really is the Create Your Own Legend Now system that we've laid out there for you. It's on our websites. We give all that information away. You go to the website, you get a lot of free information. In any case, we're going to show you how to do certain things. So you're looking for solutions for the problem that that person, that ideal client, customer, or patient has. You want to provide solutions for them as they come there. You want to assess, define, create, and monitor everything that's going on there. And then you are going to be that online legend when you use all this great content that's out there. So that's the end of our prepared information. Thank you very much. Now, we would love to take questions and answers if uh, you have some, but I'd like to uh, do a couple things for you. Um, right before we do that, I want to remind you of the round building so that when someone asks a question, there's probably something in there that applies to you as well. So don't drift off. Don't leave just because it seems like this is a question for somebody else, because it probably applies to you. And we also did mention that we have some copies of the book. If anyone's interested, we will have those afterwards. And we'll have them up happy front. To give you an autographed copy. Sure. And we'll come, come up front. Uh, we'll, we'll do it for $10. You've, you're already paying to be a join, to, to, uh, to be a member of this uh, club, so come here. And the, the book also uh, you know, has a, uh, an offer on it for the audio book, which is not your average audio book. If, you, if you're actually, <laughs> if you're an audio book fan, I don't know what possessed me, but uh, I spent many, many a night. I, I get very into the technology kind of stuff. I love video editing. I love audio editing. So we went and actually created an audio book that's kind of like an old time radio play sound effects, you know, there's a dragon in the book, there's actually a drag, an audio, sword there's fight. a sword fight, there's arrows, uh, there's music soundtrack, to, I mean, it's not your average audio book, so it's a lot of fun. And it's a business book. And I don't know why, it's just, you know, I got, got the creative page. urge, so I just the, did it. The other thing we would love to offer to you is a chance for you to practice your on-camera your, uh, on camera skills. So if you are interested in doing that and leaving a nice testimonial that goes onto our website, that will put your name as well as your business and name on there. A link to your site. Please, and a, yeah, please see uh, our good friend Chris in the back, who will hook you up, have you look right into the camera, speak for 30 to 90 seconds, whatever is good, say something about what on here. You can either sign the card that he's got to give us your name and your URL, or give him your business card and tell him what needs to go on there. We don't want to spell your information wrong, but we'd love to publicize you as we do that. We'd also like to play a little you know, social media world kind of thing. Uh, people here have smartphones. Do you have a Twitter account? Uh, it'd be kind of interesting to... Why don't you take your, your smartphones out right now? Everybody tells you to put them away and put them That's on That's right. Turn them on. Else. Come on, bring those smartphones out. We we're going to turn them on because we're going to do something fun with your smartphone. We want to do minute. something with you, okay? But certainly you could... Tweet about you know how wonderful the Warden yeah, Club many, of New York can is. Can you go uh, right now? Let, let me let me hashtag W C N Y. Yeah, do the hashtag W C N Y and say so you just had a terrific presentation from Dr. Mark and Charlie. How many people have the Twitter account right there on their phone? Nobody in the one person, two people. Chris, you can't count on that one person again. Okay, so this is part of social media and ways that we can do this. I have a buddy in Chicago who told me that his pastor from the pulpit said, would you please take out your smartphone and tweet to everybody that we're there and having this, this uh, great service. I mentioned that to some friends I have, and they shuddered. Yeah, well, it may be where things are today to be able to get it out. Okay. Now we, one thing we didn't talk much about in this presentation, but we're gonna, you know, Charlie's going to do a little demo for you in a second, is the importance of the smartphones. Uh, at this point, 84% of American adults have a smart have a phone. 43% of them have have internet capability. 20% that number is going 20% every three months. I mean, so the importance of considering not only creating your legend for the web, but creating it for mobile devices uh, is becoming more and more and more important. So you want to have things in place. And one of the most interesting things that you can do with technology these days is some of the cute things you can do with text messages. With texting. I'm going to give you a phone number in a minute. Those of you, I can tell you, you can log out of this at any time. So you're going to put your number in and your a, name. It's a self-sustained demo. You, you can come out. It's a demo is what this is to let you see how Dr. Mark and I are quickly going to jump into the back room and text right back to you. 
Well, this is part of the automated systems that we're talking right. about. Automated okay? follow-up systems. So if you'd like to see how things work these days in texting, please text to this phone number. Text your, your name. Just your name. Just your name to the... 216-503-5555. Nine eight. That's two one six five zero three text. And see what happens. Just send your first name to that number right now, and watch what happens. I often sit in the audience, and I don't participate in this one because I never know what list I'm getting onto. This is a demo. This will only have a couple messages coming to you. You have the number two one six five zero three eight three nine eight eight three nine eight. Just, just your first name. Just text your first name to yeah, that number. That's fine. And what you're going to see is you're going to see that we're going to start a conversation here. Remember the whole engagement part we're talking about? We're going to engage you on what's going on there. And for simply doing that, we are going to send you later, and we'll, we'll talk about how we're going to do this, our Create Your Own Legend webinar program guide. So it's going to give you in text in a PDF that we're going to email to you later. It's going to give you some more information about what we do. Well, we, so you can have that. Well, we just covered okay. that. Yeah. So right. did, you, did you get a reply back? Okay. Did you reply to that? There, Please do. There can be a delay, but just pay attention so to what some, it's of, some of you have gotten a reply back? Yeah. It's probably going to ask you what your, your email uh, address is. Ask you for your email is, address. You want to be able to. So what we're doing is we're combining texting and emailing. We have a lot of campaigns where we're doing that, too. Be sure to look at your email. We just sent you the XYZ report. Okay. Right. The, the world has become multi-channel, multimodal, very fragmented, and we're all very overwhelmed. I mean, you know, if you're like most people, uh, I think I probably am, yeah, I, I've got all kinds of filters on my account, so I don't even see all my emails. The ones I see, I probably get 200 a day. Uh, it's a lot more interesting if you're trying to create an automated campaign and you've just given your ideal client uh, a discount, a coupon, a, a something or other, a value. Well, what if a text message went out at the same time and said, hey, Jane, I just sent you an email in your email box with this subject line. Check it out. There's a special offer in there. That person is going to be much more likely to actually open that email because of the text message. The interesting thing about text messages is that 90% of them are actually read within one minute what, because they pop right up on and your the phone. the big majority of those are within about 10 seconds. Now, men are a little different from women in the way they handle this. I know this in my own family a lot. We happen to put our phones right in our pockets, or we wear them on our belt. My wife puts it in her purse. It could go off six times. She wouldn't know it was there. So it depends also on the age. My daughter, when she's teaching, I happen to be able to send her some emails. Mostly she's texting. So if you had a younger crowd that are your ideal customers, clients, or patients, you need to get into texting. They ain't reading their emails anymore, yeah. Okay? Real important. So you've seen a little bit of how easy this is. If you put your email address in, we will also send you that. Uh, we'll also let you know when the recording of this is available, if that's something you'd like to be interested in. Okay? Moving on. So before we run out of time, we should probably ask if there are any questions. Yes, let's go with some um, uh, question and answer. Again, if you'd like to be on camera at this point, you can stand up. You don't have to face the camera or anything. We're going to repeat the question. If you just want to stay seated, you're not being videoed. But if there's something you'd like to, uh, to ask that we've covered, um, some further insight to things, what we did on the book, what we're doing in our, our whole system, go ahead and ask. Yeah. I'm curious um, if you've ever been engaged by a client to, in the same way that you bolster a client's image or repair a client's image, to damage a client's have we ever been hired to damage a competitor's business? The answer is no. I would not take that business as well. But I'll give you a little example of something that we did fairly recently, and it's kind of fun. I'll preface it with something we did even before. We went to a conference together. We always talk about the OCMD, Ocean City, Maryland. We went to a conference. We knew who all the speakers were in that conference. We did little videos on every single one of the speakers. Dr. Mark happened to be the one editing those. So we're there in green screen, and behind us is 
uh, Joe Smith's website behind. Joe Smith's a great guy. Oh, yeah, I understand. I've read some of his books. He's really very creative. That's the front bumper. Then the next part is the same on all the videos that we did with all these different people, and they're all about the conference. We put those out on every single speaker. We go the day before to this conference. We arrived early today because we knew we had to set up. We went early for that conference. We wanted to know what the space was before we got there. We're walking in the front door to this huge new convention center. There's this guy pushing one of these trucks, look, the mail does, the soft side of things, with all this equipment. Turns out he's the head of this conference. He looks over and he says, you, you did a video of me. And I said, yes, Chuck, I did. Every single speaker knew who we were when we were there. We did not email any of them to tell them about that. But because either they have Google alerts or they're checking their own name, as all of you should be, they discovered it. And if you put their name and anything to do with this conference into the search results right around the time of this conference, we were the number one result. Including some pretty hefty authors that some were speaking hefty at this authors thing. But, you know, I mean, you're, you're, you know, it's an interesting concept. I mean, you're kind of talking about being a, 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 a web hitman in a sense. But, and no, we would not do that. And, and certainly it could be done. Um, and I would probably be surprised if someone isn't actually doing that. Uh, and so another reason why you want to be working to really protect yourself by doing what we're talking about for yourself and making sure you've got that big buffer there. But I will give you a slightly mischievous example of what we're doing right now in a marketing campaign uh, with some of our local dental clients. You mean creative, don't you? Mean yeah, yeah, well, you know, it's a little, you know, it's got a flavor of that, but in a totally friendly way. And so what we're doing essentially is creating a bunch of videos about this particular dentist uh, who, you know, is doing a so-so <coughs> job marketing themselves. So we've recorded a whole bunch of videos speaking directly at the camera as if we're speaking to Dr. So-and-so. And we are going to basically flood those things out on the web keyed to his name. And then we're going to send him some direct mail pieces that say, Dr. Smith, you know, we've been trying to get in touch with you. We've sent you a message in video, and we'd like you to find it simply by Googling your own name. And he's going to Google his name, and we're only going to do it, of course, once we've got enough out there that it's showing up there. And, you know, if all goes well, there'll be five, three, three to five videos on page one on his name with us speaking directly to him on camera. We're hoping it's going to get his attention and say, oh, you know, I didn't to, know that could be done. But to go to your question, if I'm that blogger with a burr up my butt and I decide to do five videos, we're doing five on each one of these. They happen to be dental clients because we're narrowing through that doorway right now, the 95% that we can do for everybody. At the moment, we're focusing on dentists. We keep being pulled away by others, by business people and professionals that want us to rescue them or to help them. But dentists is who we're focusing on in our marketing. So if that were somebody who was malicious and could jump above their results. Which uh, they can. Rather than Dr. Smith of Media, Pennsylvania, hello, are you there? And he said, Dr. Smith of Media, Pennsylvania, you're a scumbag. He could jump right ahead, too. So if you have a lot of things that are on the internet with your keywords, it's going to be more difficult for them to get to the top. Right. You you're know, creating a buffer. If there were videos right now on Wharton Club of New York, we w would not have jumped to number one unless I worked a little harder to get us there. But, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So your best protection is the buffer you build. Yeah. Give it to me again. You brought up like cruises, right? So yeah. I could totally envision a travel site, for example, doing something like that to damage the reputation of one of their competitors on you know, a beach in Mexico or whatever it is so that they are the place to be and everybody else has bad reviews. Well, you know, th yeah. there was actually, a co I'm trying to remember this now. It's been a, a while back now, but I, I want to say it had something to do with Facebook and, and one of their competitors, but they had hired a firm and they got basically caught with their pants down, though, because they got nailed when the information came out that they were actually putting out negative stuff about their competitors. So it's something I would, A, ethically never recommend somebody do, but I think... You know, it really doesn't make any sense in a world where, you know, it's not too hard to figure out who's paying for what to whom uh, to very quickly find out. So if you're trying to damage a competitor, it, I, I would say it would take a nanosecond for them to figure out that you're the one damaging them. And they, all they now have to do is expose you for the heel that you are, right? So I, I wouldn't go there with a 10-foot pole. So. How many people have seen any of the uh, TV commercials for Come Down to the Gulf? We're having the best season we've ever had. How do they end those? BP. I mean, as I'm the marketing consultant, I'm going, okay, I realize that BP has put all this money out there, but doesn't that just put right back that burr that says, yeah, but we used to have all this oil, and we're not really sure you got rid of all that oil. So I really worry about that one. So are they doing their own negative at the same time? 
Okay, time's going to tell on that one. But there, there was a, a page one article in the uh, Philadelphia Inquirer back in January about this, specifically about healthcare. Healthcare providers have a particular problem when somebody starts posting negative reviews about them because of HIPAA laws and things like that. They actually can't respond, you know, because they can't even acknowledge publicly that this is or isn't their patient, right? So it's a little bit tricky in that uh, kind of regard. So the the only protection you have is to really be building a deep positive image of yourself and it's the best protection because uh, you know uh, it, it's pretty hard to respond and also the, the other thing is that generally these things are fairly anonymous so you might sort of know who's posting it but mm, they're not putting their name on it usually. You got a question? You were, go ahead. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Question. Go ahead. One of, one of the difficulties in figuring out whether the people that are working for you are being successful for you happens because we have gone from the assess phase to the create phase and we skipped over the define, the define phase. phase. Right. So you need to define again who your customer, client, patient, your ideal people are that you're giving your message to, what that message is, and then how am I going to know that you have this? One of the things that we do for some clients is simply do the define phase with them. We have to do assess first because we have to know where they are. Then we do the define phase. We say, here are 12 months of the plan. Go ahead. You can do some of that yourself. You can get other people to do it or ask us to do it. But at least you have a better understanding of what those things are that they're doing because you don't want to invest a lot of money in there and then not know what's happening to it. So what are my guideposts? Right, what that you've what been benchmarks successful? do you want to create? You know. Yeah, but one yeah. of the interesting things, though, about creating the, these kind of the, the round room model with all these different landing pages and kind of things is that the other thing that that allows you to do is know exactly who's coming, how they got to you. So when you build a system like that, it's the other reason I would say that it's not worth really focusing so much on your website because things are not very easily trackable. I mean, you can put all kinds of Google uh, Google Analytics on there and know they're coming from France or from whatever and the IP address and all that, but we want to know exactly, uh, dental client in Toronto, I sent him an email saying, hey, did you see this email? Because this person just came through the, the because I know exactly where they came from because I can see what door they came from. Their email came through and the system tags exactly, yes, that person came through that site that we set up and not that one. So th there's really no excuse for someone not being able to kind of create a system that gives you metrics that it says uh, so that you'll be able to see, all right, yeah, I just paid $18,000, but the three clients I just got made me $60,000. No problem. I mean, and so... It is with pay-per-click, yeah, but pay-per-click, you know, it is... And part of the problem with, with pay-per-click as well is once, yeah. once it ends, all the work that you've done just ends right there with it as well, right? Yeah. yeah, and the other hard part about there's it is... A, there's, a, there's a place for it. There's definitely a place for it. I mean, you know, but you're, you're basically buying the traffic rather than organically getting the traffic, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you just don't want to be stuck there forever because, you know, you're much better off building this deep presence so that when they search, you're all over the place. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You are investing. And it's a huge amount of work. I mean, yeah. you know. Yeah. I can't monitor it. Exactly. No, and the truth is you don't want to monitor it. It'll drive you crazy to monitor it. Are they, are they, are they part of one model? Is a certain amount of time is put in to develop this? Or is it a I mean, in your industry? Well, again, we, of course, are going to get out of the crowd. We're not going to just differentiate ourselves within the crowd. So we don't do things the way most people do. So you're not going to be able to compare us exactly right. I can't, the same can't really speak for the industry. we don't like what a lot of other people are doing that way. But in that right? define phase, when we're sitting down with a client, we're going to define also, again, that third part. It's who's the ideal patient. It's what's the story. That, you know, it's, it's the marketing messages. But the third part is in mapping out that timeline. Part of mapping that out is what is it exactly that needs to be accomplished in the next 30 days, 60 days, or whatever. So, you know. It'd be a little bit like uh, you know hiring a contractor to build your house, right? You, you know you're not necessarily going to write them the big check up front for everything. That's one model. You could do that if you have a good relationship and you trust them, or you could you know schedule things out in different phases with specific benchmarks of what needs to be accomplished. I mean that is certainly something that can be done and should be done. You know in terms. I think of you had another question too. Then I want to go over to Carl. I think Carl had one, and then Bill too. Yeah. Did you have another one, or you want to go to Bill? Bill, and then we'll go to Carl.
Yep. Remember that whole going to the gym and getting buff and just only right. doing. You got to keep working keep out on the maintenance going. plan. Yeah. yeah. A absolutely. That's the monitor part. The, the, well, it's not just the monitor though, part. It's also what we call the expansion, expansion phase. So which we, take. we do a ton of work in that first 87, 87 days, days because we're going from zero to building as deep a presence as we can. Now, after that, we can slack off a fair amount because once you've built the presence, you can't stop because you know Google will just drop you very quickly all the, because you're just yesterday's news at that point. So if someone else is blogging on your keywords, they're just going to immediately leapfrog over you. So like working out, the sad truth is, or the good truth is, if, if you're in our line of work, I mean, you will need to do this forever. You, you can't stop. You, you can't just get fit and then be done. I, I would love that. I would love to do the, you know, the P90X 90 days. Are you I, kidding? I did. I did 90 and days. Stop. I was in the best shape of my life, and then I did absolutely squat for, for two years, and you know, lo and behold, you know, it comes right back on. Surprise. Big surprise, right? Because yeah. I really wanted to believe that, you know, after those 90 days of just, you know, killing myself to get in shape, that I could just stop and I would stay in shape. But well, I, knew, I knew it wasn't true. But I'm different. Yeah. I don't need to do it the way everybody else does. So, yeah, so right. the web is the same way. So in that expansion phase, it's a, it's a whole lot less expensive. It's a whole lot less work. But there is a monthly maintenance kind of thing where you're constantly going to be wanting to release a couple of more videos, a couple of more blog posts, a couple of new articles, another offer to the people that are on, on your mailing list to kind of keep it alive and keep it going. So Here's the thing I want to just alert you about, though. Don't go and create all this content and dump it all at one time. Right. It needs to be fed more quickly in what we would call that 87-day launch and then continue because Google says, oh, they're just a dumper. We're going to get rid of them. We're, you know, we don't believe them. This is not the way a normal person would act naturally on adding new content, a new video, whatever. So you can't come in day one, put 20 videos out like this, and expect to rock it to the top. It isn't going to happen. But you can do it over about three months, 87 days, as we like to, to call it. So you can... Um, Put all that material, and then you got to keep going once you've started it. So that but, they but say, I'd like okay, to actually, I come back to the. I'd like to actually answer your question also in a different way. I mean, the thing that bugs me about a lot of SEO people, and some of them are very, very good, and they deserve every dime that they get paid. But um, th there's a world out there that's always trying to figure out how to game the system, how to beat Google's analytics, how to beat Google's you know algorithm. And I keep sitting back and scratching my head and saying, why in the world are you doing that? I mean, Google's model is incredibly logical and simple. What Google wants, you know, and what makes them money is, is one simple concept. It's called relevance. They want the words that you type in when you want to find information to lead you to the most relevant source of that information. Well, I mean, you could pay a lot of money to, to cheat and get your website to pretend to be the most relevant thing. But again, I scratch my head and I'm like, well, why? Because all you're going to get is a disappointed, pissed off customer, right, when they figure out that you, you ain't the best thing. Create great content. You know, be the most relevant source of the expertise in your niche. I mean, spend the time to take, I mean, all of you are probably pretty deep experts in your, in your niche already, or in probably in several of them. Drill deep into that and create great content, you know, or get someone to create great content for you by helping you create those questions and interviewing you. You know, there's nothing wrong with getting ghost writers to kind of help you out, but, but create great content and you don't have to trick anything. Now the person searches for it, and you are the answer. And you've put more of it out there and, and, and more great content in all these different media-rich kind of ways. They're going to find you. I mean, it doesn't Can take... Can Carl next and then come back over here? Just within the LinkedIn environment. What LinkedIn you environment. What, what do you recommend to your customers as far as participating in groups and, and updating information within LinkedIn? Is that valuable? Absolutely. It's it valuable. certainly is valuable. Um, you want to make sure that you can have some kind of contact with the people. Great to see you. You too. Um, I think groups can do a number of things for you, depending on whether or not you're putting other content out there. Part of the problem comes, let's say I'm a baker and I join all the bakers groups. I used to go to a lot of photographer groups. Are my clients there? Am I getting business out of the other photographers? No. I can learn some things from them, but I'm not going to get business out of them. So go to some of the ones where your customers and clients are so that you can then leave good, cogent comments. I will give you an example. He's mentioned it, Dr. Mark's mentioned it a couple times, our Toronto client. We, and he's been a very important client. We have two clients up there. He's been a very important client for us. Came to us because I left a comment on somebody else's blog. And underneath that, I had my web address that the person could follow. Never leave a comment anywhere on the net. You don't have a way for somebody to get to you. 
So he goes, he starts buying up all our products. I follow what's going on on our sites. It happens to be as we divide our labor. That's one of the things I do. Saw this. I said, who the heck is this guy? We got in touch with him. He, almost the first thing out of his mouth was, I don't want you to sell me anything. I want platinum. He didn't even know what platinum was, but he wanted it. <laughs> How nice to be able to have customers, clients, patients come to you that already know you. We've already engaged them. All the stuff we talked to you about today, we already do for ourselves. So there are ways that you can do that within LinkedIn as well. Now, they've got some walls up there, and they're trying to hold. Well, my problem with LinkedIn is, is that so many people feel it's their resume, and they're putting the entire building on there as opposed to putting a little niche that they want people to come to. So you go there and you think Carl is the expert in watches because of this great experience, but they're looking for you for something else and it gets them confused. And then they see that you're the candlestick maker and all the other things we're talking about. And they're confused at that point. So you, you want to be but, careful about that. But real power, in touch with it. LinkedIn's real power is, is, is a research tool. I mean, to be able to find the, the kind of person, the exact person that you're looking to, the, the ability to play the Kevin Bacon game and say, all right, I want to meet that person, but they're four degrees of separation from me, and I can map exactly how to go and get the personal introduction. But most people will, will tell you you'll have much better mileage if you do the research to find who it is and then get that, but do it outside of LinkedIn then and, and go and get the direct connection. But, but building, I mean, it's just a beautiful networking tool to be able to find people that you would never meet otherwise and build a really nice, expansive network of people who know what you do. So. We had a question in here, I think, and then we'll come to these fellows. Okay, and, and I should have said that up front. I appreciate your mentioning that. We use Google and we mean all of them. Right, we use it are as a synonym for the search engines. Yes, but, yeah. it's search engines. They are, I mean, we don't talk about binging something. We do talk about Googling something. Right, they're the 800 pound gorilla. But and when we're in business in particular, business uses it a great deal more than the others. But I would not ignore the others. If I'm doing pay per click or if I'm doing some other things, I want to see if we're doing uh, assessing, we want to see how. Bing puts right, you we'll, up. We'll Yahoo look at still. We look at the, the big, th you know, you know, Thank Google, you Bing, asking. and Yahoo. But again, you know, they they all have slightly different algorithms, and those are top secret, and you'll never know exactly how they work. But it goes back to what I said before. I, I don't see a lot of point in spending so much work trying to figure out how to game the system. It's the, they all really work in the same way. I mean, the they all have the same goal, which is to link the search term to the most relevant best information so uh, my my answer would really be the same create the best most relevant information and all all the big search engines will get you there especially if you're putting it all over different websites because some may have a preference as i mentioned google will have a preference for uh, for uh, youtube because they own it uh, but others may have another one but put it everywhere you know put it on the article sites that's why we do video audio and print because they'll get indexed differently but if you're if you're the expert in your niche you'll get found We'll have two more. I saw here, and then there was one other. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. We'll go come ahead. back. Uh, go ahead. You, you have uh, you know, a, zillion, a zillion different websites. How do you, how do you avoid the, uh, the confusion? Excellent question. Most of the time, they're going to the round building through the doorway to solve their problem and finding us in that problem area and then looking us up. Okay? So then they will search for us specifically. But some of the ones that I have that predate our working together um, would be fathers and the daughters they love. I learned it all from my kids. CharlesSeymourJr.com. If you don't own your own name, I would suggest you go do that. You should have that out there as well. So they'll see some similar things that won't detract from it. And then some of them might say, I'm not active on this anymore, but see where our work is over here, and I send them over there. So one of the things that we recommend is that so many people in business in particular feel that I've got to be like this. You know, it's not just the mantle they have on. They've got a straight jacket on. And I can't show that I'm really into playing the bassoon or I raise uh, cocker spaniels or I love skiing. People want to know that. They want to go where you are because they, they really have some relationship building with you. Right. So unless you're, unless you're schizophrenic and, and are doing a zillion completely unrelated things, I mean, it's really not going to be that, that big an issue. If you, because chances go, go are that with your chances are they they're, they're related to each other still, even if they're different doors. All right. Well, this is this is more of a new economy, the you know the real world type situation. You're you're doing X, and it's not it's not enough, and you're you're looking to do other things in your career. You've got these you know four different 
splinter skills by going out there and having you know four different uh, personas. That <coughs> that takes a when when you're interviewing with one situation, they're saying, "Holy cow! You know, this guy is not just focused on my business. He's focused on these other three things." Right. Too. Well, you can't run away from it. So, because if it's out there, it's going to be there, and you're smart to realize that it's out there. So we can't run away from it. Uh, there are people that we continue to run into that say, oh, 2000, you started a photography business, you're a photographer. No, I'm a marketer who uses photography. Was I a photographer? Yeah, that was, we, we went through all those doorways right now. So I talk about how I use those skills in what we do. Figure out your own way and what your story is that connects some of that. And yeah, I also ski and I like Volvos and I, uh, you know, I go to Gestad and I, you know, whatever it is that works for you. Uh, to connect those, because that is who you are as a whole person, right? right? And, and you may need to create, as part of that n concept of creating your legend, I mean, you may need to create a narrative that logically links. Let's say there are these four different phases of your career, and they are overlapping, and they're happening. So, so can you craft a story that, you know, makes it make sense? Because you're right, if it makes no sense, then, then you know, you're you're just going to confuse somebody. And there's an old adage that says, the confused mind says no. Yeah. You know, all right, I don't really understand you, so I'm certainly not going to hire you because I just don't get you. Um, but know that it's you, and if you can put that thread to go in there, somehow you have to be able to do it because it is who you are. Right. right? Yeah. There is a story that got you to do these four things, right? I work so. with professional theaters. And, and include the, the personal stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. To, Absolutely. To, to a degree. I mean, you know, I mean, th that's one thing that it's right part of our bio. people are learning the hard way is that you know there there is there a good reason to have some filters on your personal life on the web because the web is a very unforgiving place once it's out there. Okay. We'll have one more question as he's getting ready to run. The 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 pay per click kind of Google ads. You mean or uh, yeah? Well, we don't personally use them at all. Um, you know, we're we're not opposed to them. Um, you know, it's a great way to buy traffic in a hurry if you need to get people there. But you know, our recommendation would be as fast as you can move to building enough relevant stuff that people are finding you. A, it's much more cost effective in the long run, uh, and it builds a, a much more lasting presence. But it's a powerful tool, and clearly it works. Otherwise, Google would not be you know so successful and if, at and it. And if you need to have a quick shot that gets it out there when they're searching over in here, right, uh, in the organic area to put some of those. That would be a good thing to do. So uh, again, thank you very much. If you'd like to practice some of those skills in front of the camera, that would be very helpful for us as well. If you'd like a copy of our book, see us up front. So uh, I'd like to thank uh, our hosts here, yeah. right? So we're very grateful for the use of their space. We'd like to thank the Wharton Club of New York and Carl Rosen, who got us to speak here today. So I'm Charlie Seymour, Jr. And I'm Dr. Mark Kosman. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Rob Solomon. I'm a bankruptcy lawyer on Long Island, a member of the Wharton Club of New York. My web address is www.solomonlawyer.com. Uh, I just wanted to uh, give a brief testimonial on, uh, on the program I just saw with uh, Dr. Mark and Charlie. It was very entertaining. I've been involved in SEO and, and trying to get my web presence out there, and it was very understandable to me, and I compliment them on making a rather difficult topic very, very understandable and enjoyable. I would strongly recommend any person to work with these two folks. Few sessions I've been a part of to date, even as a young professional, have been as impactful. Oh, okay. Tell us how to find you. Okay. It's more about you than it is about Ah, 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 okay. All right. Understood. No problem. My name is Andrew Stern, and I work for the Leadership, Learning, and Diversity Group at Bloomberg. You can find me on LinkedIn or Facebook. And having just been a part of the session this evening, I, I can say with full confidence that not only did I learn a lot, that my mind was opened, but not only those two things, I now have an action plan that I'm able to implement to continue to build my presence online and bolster uh, my brand on the internet. And I think that if I'm able to have that impact or receive that impact and only an hour of interaction with these two guys, you'll have similar results and be similarly impacted. Okay. I would strongly recommend any person to work with these two folks. 
few sessions I've been a part of to date, even as a young professional, have been as impactful. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Tell us how to find you. Okay. It's more about you than it is about Ah, 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 ah. Okay. All right. Understood. No problem. Okay. I love where you're headed. Okay. Again, I'm going to give you three seconds. Sure. Three. My name is Andrew Stern, and I work for the Leadership, Learning, and Diversity Group at Bloomberg. You can find me on LinkedIn or Facebook. And having just been a part of the session this evening, I, I can say with full confidence that not only did I learn a lot, that my mind was opened, but not only those two things, I now have an action plan that I'm able to implement to continue to build my presence online and bolster uh, my brand on the internet. And I think that if I'm able to have that impact or receive that impact in only an hour of interaction with these two guys, you'll have similar results and be similarly impacted. I'm Carl Rose and I'm head of the career networking of the Warden Club of New York and it was great to have Charlie and Dr. Mark here tonight. Um, it was very informative, very engaging. I was very impressed with how passionate the people were about participating and really understanding because in this new world you need to do di things differently. In my consulting business, I'm principal of Shelter Rock International and I picked up a lot of tips and techniques of how I need to go out and market myself. So I want to thank Charlie and Mark so much for being here and imparting that knowledge on all of us.